Well, my name is Rich Galan. I'm at Rubicon Project. If you guys don't know what Rubicon Project is, we are an ad tech company. Um, we are one of the largest in the world. Um, what ad tech is, is essentially it's an exchange for buying and selling of advertising. So think of NASDAQ, um, except for instead of you know buying and selling stock, we're buying and selling advertising. So it's all across the board, mostly digital advertising. We do mobile, video, et cetera. We're going into billboards, which is really cool as well, TV as well. So what that means is, I'm going to leave these numbers up here for a little while just so you can see them. A couple numbers to focus on. We have 55,000 CPUs globally across seven data centers. So it's a lot of core machines that we're running through in our infrastructure. We have seven data centers, like I said, global. I think we've got eight now coming on board. Uh, we might have another one by the end of the year. We have our own infrastructure. All of the um, advertising runs through these infrastructures. We have ad engines and bid engines that are doing the auctioning and decisioning systems in real time. Um, two and a half times more transactions than NASDAQ. Sorry, Visa, we do more transactions than you guys do a day. So uh, I, I know you threw a couple big numbers out there. So what that means is we're analyzing a lot of data. Okay? We, it's a supply and demand business. It's very economical. We have over 700 partners on our supply side. We have 200 plus partners on our demand side. So what we need, to know, what we need is real time anomaly detection. So we don't have thousands of people looking at this data all the time. What we need is somebody to, some, something to tell us when there are issues. Now, what's really good is, um, here's, our, here's our infrastructure and monitoring. Uh, we use Graphite, if anybody's familiar with all this stuff. Uh, Graphite, Nagios, and now we use Anadot. The business monitoring side of the house is your very typical microstrategy, big data systems running through Hadoop, et cetera, uh, and then we monitor it. The biggest challenges we've had is being able to, to run manual alerts and false positives on this stuff. So what that means is the, uh, the network operation centers who run all these 55,000 machines are very good at binary alerts. So is a machine down in Amsterdam um, you know, at 2 a.m., right? So that machine is up or it's not. What we were having problems with is on the business side. So if one of our partners or one of our clients was running, not trading at a certain percentage at 2 o'clock in Hong Kong, we would not see that information for another three more days or in the next day. It would take us a lot of time to figure out, based on all that information, as analysts to come up and aggregate all that information. We'd get it the next day, we'd aggregate it, we'd say, eh, it was kind of off a little bit and then <clears throat> have to drill down even further, it would take us probably a day or two to even figure out that that was specific to that data center. So what we needed was also was scale, right? In this case, scale is across all of those data centers, across all those partners, and being able to say, hey, there's a problem here, go figure out what's happening here on the business level. So again, on the technologies level, uh, it was, you know, on or off on the business side, is it trending off by a certain percentage? And that's what Uri, Uri was saying earlier, is that based off of uh, seasonality, we can kind of see that and it's built in. So a lot of buzz terms we've heard in the industry, big data, data scientists, everybody wants to be a data scientist now. This brings the data science back to the business side of the house. So we straddle both the business and the engineering side. So without actually being a data scientist and knowing about statistics, their system actually brings that to the business folks and says, hey, look, based off seasonality, based off of trends, based off of how this is supposed to look, there might be an issue here or there is an issue here based on how you have it set up. Go figure out what's going on here. And those alerts come into our emails. We also have dashboards that we have running on those alerts and what these really cool things called Animaps where it actually, it's almost like a heat map where it tells you exactly where to go look and where the problem is. So this brings a lot of that data scientist-y stuff and a lot of that uh, CTO knowledge back down to the business users so that we can kind of understand like where we should go look from there. So um, again, it was hard to use systems that we were using on the tech side. Their platform is really it's very simple. It's a simple UI, which is why we use them. Uh, we ran them up against a couple other companies that were doing similar things. Theirs was the best, uh, at least on the business side. Um, 
and then for as far as the choice, uh, it was an evaluator buy or builder buy, right? Everybody does a builder buy evaluation. We ran through this through our whole uh, technology platform, and uh, actually, our chief data scientist said that it would take six data engineers a year to build it. So it was a no-brainer for us. Uh, again, how they've helped with that, so the manual alerts and the false positives. Um, again, we're able to gauge outside of what's happening right now in real time. So this is great for us. The real-time information is good for us. Uh, the scale is even better. So we're planning on building this out even further across all of our, all of our data centers, across all of our platforms, and across all of our partners. It's also going to help us potentially do this externally. So what we want to do is be able to provide this data to our clients externally as well, on our seller side and our buyer side, so that they can either API into us using the anomaly detection and so that they can look at their platforms as well. So again, up and running fast. We ran a POC with these guys. Uh, we were up and running in no time. Like It was just a simple relay off using our systems into their systems. They, as, as, long as, they, as soon as they started collecting enough data, they were able to run their models, and we were able to get alerts right away. And we actually, during our short POC process, we were able to, to find some anomalies from there. Uh, a couple use cases I wanted to show you. This one specifically. So uh, one of the good things that their systems does is, is they do correlation. So if you have multiple metrics, so just think of two simple metrics. In this case, our system runs on bidding and uh, timeouts, what we call timeouts, that's latency. So we send an ad request out to somebody that says, hey, do you guys want to trade with us? They'll send it back and say yes. Okay? That's what this response dollars is. If they don't send it back in enough time um, so the auction can run, um, they won't be able to enter the auction. So in this case, um, we noticed that the timeouts had ramped, or the, the bid response had dropped in this case, which means they were not sending bids into our auction, and we were able to correlate it with timeouts and r report back to the customer and say, hey, look, you guys are not sending us bids. It seems to be because it's timing out. And they said, oh, no, we, had a, we, had a, we just did a release. Seems like there's a bug in the release. Thank you. We'll go fix it, right? So it's good relay back and forth and close that loop between us and our infrastructure back to our customers. And sometimes it's, I hate to say it, but sometimes it happens to us too. Right, we'll have problems on our side as well. Uh, again, this is, th this is the Animap, so I just wanted to show you guys how we use this. Uh, Uri just showed it. This is what I was talking about, the heat map here. Uh, do we have a little pointer here? How does the thing work? Oh. Anyway, um, the top part is, is kind of the heat map, and that's how that shows. You can see the an anomalies, and this is what Uri was explaining earlier. That orange part is where it's, it's trending outside. So this is... Even though it's, this game is a little daunting on the business side, once you look at it, it's, it's pretty simple, right? It's an orange line. It's outside of trend, right? Uh, we use this in our network operations center along with these dashboards and I guess uh, a lot of information. What's great is, is we, in these dashboards, everybody's seen dashboards before, everybody's seen charts. These red lines that you see in each one of these lines that are going up and down and each one of these charts that are going up and down, these are where the anomalies are. So this helps us spot on a daily basis. I think this is over a 24-hour uh, period. Um, this is when things happen. And then you can see exactly in real time when this happens and then when your numbers drop from there and where your trend breaks from there. Um, so looking ahead, real quick, um, we're going to expand this out into infrastructure monitoring. So right now, this is specific for business case monitoring. We're looking at our clients and looking to make sure that they're they're running good or not. Um, and we're going to expand this out into our infrastructure as well. Uh, our tech ops team has said this thing is awesome. We need to run it. We need to go from there. Additionally, historical anomalies are going to be key for us as well. What that means is right now we're running in real time, uh, real time monitoring across our data centers. What I want to be able to do is we run a lean shop on the analytics side of the house. And we're at the point where we have so many attributes, so many metrics. Um, so many metrics and so many partners that it's, it's becoming very difficult for humans to kind of analyze this stuff in enough time to actually figure out what's happening, right? It could take us three days, could take us a week, 
one partner, you know, one data, one data center, and one metric. So we're going to ask these guys to help leverage not just real time, but looking at historical data and looking at um, longer trends over time to say, uh, to help us and throw machines at it, basically, then rather than throw humans at it. Because rather than staff up a thousand people, I'm going to have a machine do this. This is where we're talking about AI. This is what we're talking about machine learning. They're doing a great job of doing that, um, just aggregating things at more of a daily, weekly, monthly level to help us figure out where the anomalies are. We have tons of partners, and, and we want to be able to at least give us a starting point as analysts to say, there's a problem here, like way down in the weeds. Go figure out if this is the solution. So, uh, and that's about it.